Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, citizens of all ages, welcome back to another edition of Star Citizen 3.1 PTU. So, today, as you've probably seen by the title of this video, we're taking out the Terrapin, and we are going to put it through its combat paces. Um, there has been... I guess what you could say, uh, a little bit of controversy over the Terrapin. Not much, just a little bit. Um, for a couple reasons. Um, one, well, really, it's kind of one big reason. When the Terrapin was first shown off in concept, uh, they basically alluded that it was a military ship, um, but not a military ship, if that makes sense. Um, with it being from Anvil, Anvil being the main purveyor of military ships, um, people were kind of under the impression that it was going to be more militaristic than it seems to be. Um, it was also touted as having thick armor, uh, being able to withstand more than a normal ship, um, and it's supposed to be heavily plated. In fact, you can actually see all the plates and things like that. Those little wings that are up, those aren't wings, those are actually vents, uh, which are supposed to be able to help with your stealth. Um, and this is a bug. It seems like if you're in third person and try to uh, pull the landing gear up, it just redeploys, so... Apologies, bear with me. Um, I really like the look of the ship, though. As you can see, the engines have now switched to the correct position, aiming, uh, you know, back. But it seems like those side engines may actually be the maneuvering thrusters, where the main uh, thrust actually does come from the two rear engines. And I gotta say, I even though I was expecting the Terrapin to be larger, um... I actually really like it. So let's pull out uh, our missions. Let's accept the mercenary fight pirates mission, and let's let's get a moving. Okay, here let's get another nice little 360 look. Uh, again, this even though this was kind of touted as like a space turtle of sorts. Um, I'm actually really happy with it. I really like the way that it looks. It looks like it is encapsulated like in a shell. Um, like that top portion it really looks like it can take a beating um, and, you know, keep all inside protected. I feel like this would be a great ship to run uh, missions through, you know, asteroid fields such as what we're seeing now. Um, or if you've got to do the, what was it, recover uh, the like nav computer or the black box I could see that uh, being used uh, I could see this ship being used in that mission a lot given the fact that it is touted as having this extra protection and armor uh, you know go into the more dangerous places maybe grab people for um, you know emergency uh, evacuations emergency rescues um, so I'm, I'm hoping that this stands up for the combat. I mean, just look at that. Its look is pretty nice, you know? Like, it's not aggressive, but it definitely doesn't look um, wimpy, you know? I'm really warming up to it. In fact, the more that I flew it, the more I started liking it. Um, like, the inside view with all of the uh, screens here. It just looks so cool. Okay, so uh, we are now coming up on the location uh, with a couple of hostiles. So let's put this thing through its paces. Now, by default, I'm fairly certain the Terrapin comes with two M4A laser weapons. Um, but in a prior test, I wasn't really liking them, so I actually swapped them out for two badgers. So the test might be skewed ever so little, but in my opinion, it was more of a preference thing. So just wanted to get that out of the way. 
So, given the fact it's got the two Badgers and uh, comes stock with the two M4As, we basically have a good idea of what the weapon should do. So some of this testing is coming down more so to its maneuverability, uh, overall combat ability, its shielding, and how the parts in and of themselves stand and or perform. Uh, and I have to say, I'm actually pleasantly surprised. Uh, the Terrapin, again, I, I am warming up to this ship so damn much. Um, I really like the fact that it just, it feels secure. You know, it feels armored. It feels like, you know, you can jump in this thing and bounce off of a few asteroids, which I don't suggest. But it feels like <laughs> you can. And its look is just awesome, you know? Um, and again, its maneuverability is, is better than I was expecting, and I really hope, really honest to God, I truly hope that Sig does not mess with its tuning. I hope they, if they do do anything to its tuning, I just hope they make it more agile. But it doesn't even need that. Uh, I'm just saying that because I don't want them to nerf it like they've been doing. Sig seems to be on a nerf fest as of late. So here we're going up against a Cutlass Black, and I think a Cutlass Black would actually be a really good uh, test example, as the Cutlass Black, for a lot of people, myself included, is kind of the go-to ship now. The, the rework has put the Cutlass Black in a class all its own. Oh, and as you can see, there we go, I got hit by a couple of missiles, and it really doesn't even seem like it did all that much damage. Admittedly, though, those were Rattlers. Uh, if you're not familiar, Rattlers are the cluster missiles. So you fire one, and it actually has, I think, like five or six smaller uh, missiles in it. It's definitely a saturation of attack. Uh, and it, I do believe they nerfed... I do believe they nerfed the Rattlers, um, so there you go, that, and that's you know, why. So doing a quick uh, damage report, if you will, uh, the ship basically looks unscathed, uh, which again is another reinforcement of its well, reinforced armor. <laughs> you know, it's a good example of it. So let's throw in a little bit of uh, vanity shots of the ship. Um, going into quantum, flying around a little bit, and again, just seeing this thing among the stars with everything, it's better than I was expecting or anticipating. Um, once I found out just how big, well, small, this thing actually was, I was actually quite disappointed. I'm not going to lie. <clears throat> um, people were saying it's the size of a freelancer. I would argue it's smaller than a freelancer. Uh, in fact, I would argue that quite vehemently, as it does not look to be even the size of a freelancer. It might be in length, but not in terms of space. Uh, hell, I don't even think it's the length of a freelancer. Uh, here I am testing out the weapons just a little bit to kind of have a good look see. Uh, I don't know, I just like to do that every now and again, just to see what it looks like from, like, you know, looking down the barrel, if you will. Okay, next target is spotted, which is going to be another Gladius. Um, now, the Gladius is using primarily ballistics and missiles uh, as its main offensive weapons. Um, so again, I'd be very curious to see what kind of damage, if any, this is able to produce against my Terrapin. Um, and it uh, looks like there's a, a missile. Um, in this encounter, there was actually, I think, two other uh, friendly vehicles. They were NPC uh, AI controlled. But I think there was one Gladius and one other. I'm not sure if it'll uh, but that's where that missile came from, as, as I'm sure you're aware, the Terrapin is missile-less, so it has no missiles at all. A little bit, um, uh, I don't know, a 
little bit of a kick in the pants, if, if you ask me. I would have really liked the Terrapin to at least have the ability to put missiles on it, like have a hard point or two somewhere near like the underside of the ship to at least attach something. As if I'm not mistaken, which I could be uh, mistaken, but I am fairly certain the Terrapin is um, uh, a military ship. Yeah, well, I mean, scanning and exploration, but with it being from Anvil, I mean, you know, they are the military they're the military ship producer. Um, and I think a lot of us, myself included, were expecting it to kind of be like a uh, needle in a haystack type ship, or, you know, a diamond in the rough, where, sure, technically it's not meant to or touted as a fighter, but it's still got some teeth. And I'd have to say it almost fully holds up to that. Um, here I am taking damage. You can see I'm getting hit in the cockpit area. Luckily, it can penetrate through and, and uh, tag the pilot, aka me, as I've actually had that happen a couple times. I've had ballistic rounds penetrate through the cockpit, actually um, tagging my player character, and then I would end up bleeding out while uh, still in combat, which... Boy, the first time that happened was I confused. I thought maybe I hit a bug, or um, I hit a bug in relation to the interior of the ship where, like, you know, oxygen stopped, or I don't know, something to that effect. But nope, the, the round actually entered through the cockpit and, in essence, blew a giant hole in my character, and I just let out behind the wheel. Go. I'm putting the hurt down, putting the hurt down, and boom goes the dynamite. So once again, I mean, this is a fairly capable, pretty damn good, uh, I would say, rounded out ship. The only thing really that it's missing is the ability to officially hold cargo. Well, that and uh, the inclusion of missiles. But, in all honesty, if they leave the ship almost exactly as it is, um, I'll take not having missiles. And I'll accept not being able to haul cargo. Um, and when I say the ability to officially take cargo, I don't mean have, you know, 20, 30 cargo units. No, no, no. I'm saying something more like um, the Avenger, you know, where it's got like two or four, something like that, just so we can have something on board. Um, you know, like if we were able, or if we did end up, excuse me, um, finding cargo, you know, that we had to load by hand, I would be really happy, even if it only had like one or two SCU, just so that way at least when we loaded it in there, it could be registered and recognized, and we'd actually be able to go ahead and sell it. All right, next targets, uh, Cutlass Black, and I think there's another Gladius and or Aurora. Uh, I don't know, I'll have to double check on that. Uh, so again, going up against the Cutlass, uh, I think is another great test. That would be at least the second one, uh, given the fact that the Cutlass is so highly used. Uh, by the players as well as AI. Now if you just noticed, uh, the targeting reticle, the orange pieces, disappeared. I've been running into that a lot. In fact, you might have just seen the two players or two or three uh, ships that just popped up in the lower left. Um, I keep running into this. Uh, it's definitely been fixed up more than it was previously. But it seems as though still having some slight reticle issues, uh, or targeting issues, not reticle. But luckily, I was able to dispatch that cutlass relatively quick, and moving on to the gladiators now. And as I was saying uh, previously, you can see there are a couple of friendly NPCs uh, in and around this area. 
Uh, I'm trying to take a couple of pot shots at the Gladius, as it seems like it's just kind of standing there. Uh, one of the missiles just flies right by it, not even paying any mind to it. And finally, the Gladius starts to take damage. It, see, it, it appears like the pilot is sleeping, so give him a nice little love bump, <laughs> see if you can wake him up. And then, uh, there we go, make short work of it. Not quite sure why he just sat there and took it, um, but hey, chalk it up as an easy win, I guess. Kind of feels like uh, a cheap win, though, you know? Kind of like uh, when you found out or heard about the trick in Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater for fighting the end, where you can just save your game and then come back seven days later, or just change the clock in the system to seven days ahead. And then when you come back to the boss fight, uh, the end had died of old age. <laughs> it was like, oh, yeah, okay, I I, I can count that as a, as a victory, but man, is that a cheap victory. Um, <laughs> shout out to you if uh, you've played and liked Metal Gear 3. That was my shit as a kid. Actually, the entirety of Metal Gear was my shit. Okay, now let's get a couple more... Uh, glory shots, or a couple more vanity shots of the Terrapin. Again, every time I look at this ship, it grows on me more and more. Um, if, I just, ugh, I really wish it was a little bit bigger, um, and a little bit longer, you know? Um, one thing that struck me as odd about the ship is you can technically have two people in there, in order to use the scanning uh, console, you need to have two people in there, uh, or at least to use it correctly as you know, you're going to be on the move. Um, but it only has one bed. Um, and that's another reason why I think it should be you know, a little bit longer. A, to get the bed in there, and B, to get a little bit of cargo space in there. So speaking of scanning station, let's, you know, take a peek at it. Uh, obviously with scanning not being in the game, uh, this is more for decoration at the moment. Uh, I actually jumped into the seat just to see if there was anything we could do with it. Uh, it looks like we can't even power it on. So I wonder if this is just uh, attached to the overall uh, power of the ship itself. So if power is on to the ship, scanning is just on. Um, or perhaps it's going to be like most utilities where we actually have to flip it on, but because it's not in the game yet, we won't be able to. I mean, you know, pretty straightforward stuff. Okay. Well, uh, I think I'm actually going to leave the video here. Um, so, final verdict, the Terrapin is a very competent fighter. Um, it's definitely not something that you want to go out looking for a fight against multiple uh, people. A uh, couple of pirates you might be able to take, but if you're going up against another player, um, I don't think that it would do as good, especially with its weapons leaving much to be desired, um, and the stock ones especially being quite lackluster. So, other than that, um, if you liked the video, please leave a like. Uh, if you got any questions, comments, concerns, or ideas for future episodes, leave them down below in the comments section. I'm always going through looking at your guys' stuff and commenting and all that, uh, all that goodness. March Cutlass Black giveaway is most certainly still on and popping. Uh, the giveaway date is fast approaching, so um, to be entered, you just have to be a subscriber, like and comment the videos all throughout March, and that's it. You're entered. So, um, other than that, all you beautiful bastards out there, have yourselves a wonderful day, morning, evening, whenever, where happen you just so happen to be. This has been Will. Peace. Jack.